Let's talk about how to master a song in Reaper using Reaper plugins. I'm Keith from No Label No Producer No Limits.com. Let's dive right in. So here's a project of mine that I mastered recently in Reaper using free Reaper plugins. Let's take a look at the mastering chain. So first of all, on my master itself, I don't have any plugins that affect the sound here. Now, for the actual mastering chain, I usually do that on a pseudo master. This is just a regular channel through which all of my music and vocals are flowing. So my actual mastering chain sits in this effects area. So now, let me just say this is a mastering chain that's specific to this song. I don't necessarily think you should use exactly these plugins in these orders. This is just what I came up with to do this song. So let's take a look from top to bottom. First off, I used re-EQ just to roll off a little of the bottom in below, you know, about uh, 30 hertz. And compared to my reference mixes, this had a little extra sizzle. So I pulled some of that off too from about 15K upwards. Next off, I have a loudness meter because I want to see where this song is at coming off the mix bus. And as you can see, it's quite a bit different level the peaks are at minus 6, and the integrated LUFS is down there around minus 17 before I start any compression. So that doesn't affect the sound at all. I'm just getting a reading on where I want to be. So I'm going to want to maybe shave some of these peaks off and bring the peak level closer to the LUFS level in order to control my dynamic range. And the reason that I use this meter is that the clipper that I'm using, the JS event horizon clipper doesn't really have metering that helps me see too well but I'll, I'll show you what I do so I just want to say I'll be there in no time. so you can see I've got some peaks here about minus six so I set the threshold for this at minus seven which means the threshold's going to be here but I have soft clip of 2 dB so I think what that means is that at about minus 9, or halfway between the 12 and the 6 marks here, it's going to start clipping, and it's going to soft clip up to minus 7, where it's going to just completely stop. So that's why I wanted to use these meters here to sort of get a judge of where my peaks were actually coming in. A little easier to see than on Event Horizon itself. So the Event Horizon, I have a ceiling set of minus 1, so this is going to bring my level up significantly, I'll show you. Okay, now I have another great Reaper plugin called Reek. It's not Re-EQ, R-E-A, it's R-E-E-Q. And it has a mid-side mode. And I'm using this to roll some of the low end off of the side. So you can see this is set for the side, and here on the mid, I'm boosting a little bit of the high mids at, at about 2K, and here I am boosting a little bit of the side at about 5K, and this should give us just a little bit more tightness up the center in the bottom end, and a little bit more apparent wideness in the entire mix. So I just wanna say It's really interesting to me how the kick centers and comes out more with this EQ on, with the lows rolled out of the sides a little bit. Plus that just very, very subtle lift in the high end on the sides for extra width. So I just want to say I'll be there in no time. We've gotten rid of some of the excess stuff in the low end. I think it's time to take another look at the volume. And uh, I chose to just use the volume pan smoother to drop down a dB because I think we were peaking at this point. So I just wanna say, I'll be there in no time. Yeah, you can see I'm peaking on the input, so I use this to come down a little bit. Now, if you're in an all digital world and you've got all digital style plugins, I wouldn't worry about peaking at all. But I've got some analog modeled plugins in here and 
when they're pushed hard, they sound different. And I don't want to push them past zero unless I decide to do it. I don't want it decided for me. So I just pulled a dB off here so that at the output, we're still reading below zero. So I just find it safe. Okay, then I have some mid-side encoding and decoding going on. And the reason I did this is I wanted to compress the mid differently from the side. So I encoded mid-side, and then I added one compressor to the mid. That is pin 1, input and output, and another compressor to the side signal, which is on pin number 2. So we have slightly different compression. If we can bring this side signal up, compress it and bring it up a little bit, we again will have an increased sense of width and a more stable sense of width. Now, I'm not terribly concerned with the width in this song because it was good to begin with, but just a slight lift is okay. Let's take a listen with these on and off. So I just want to say I think that's also a little bit louder when they're on, but there's a slight lift in the width. And once again, I'm pushing the outputs here a little bit on the, both the mid and the side, but we've compressed and brought the peaks down a little bit. However, after I decode, I'm doing another volume adjustment just to make sure I'm not peaking coming into this multiband compressor. And so once again, you'll see the input and the output here on this volume adjustment. So I just want to say I'll be there in no time So we're peaking a little bit, so I'm using this volume adjustment to bring us back down. Then we have the Toucan multi-band compressor. I've got it set up for five bands. And I'm compressing each band less than 3 dB and making up a little bit of the gain with the output controls. And you'll be able to see these compressors just working here on the various bands. I'm just uh, turning this one down a little bit and narrowing the super low lows, but everything else is just a standard multiband. So I just want to say I'll be there in no time. I plan I get away, gonna leave all this behind. No, I'm not gonna stay, gonna hit the road and feel the wind up on my And again, since I've made, I have made some adjustments with the outputs here, so I just pulled half a dB down to make sure that when I come into this two-can stereo bus compressor, that I'm not peaking here on the inputs. So I just want to say, I'll be there in no time. I, I, now this bus compressor, I'm just just barely tickling the input meters, but you'll hear the difference. So I just want to say. Tightens it up, gives it some analog sounding goodness, in my opinion. Last in the chain is Relimit. And you can see I've got a brick wall ceiling at minus 0.7, which would hopefully prevent any overages if we convert the file to MP3 and 44.1K. I've got it set for true peak. And let's just take a look at what I'm doing. I've set this threshold so that I'm just maybe half a dB at the loudest parts of the song. So I just want to say I'll be there in no time I plan I get away Gonna leave all this behind No, I'm not gonna stay Gonna hit the road And feel the wind up on my face well, You can see I'm barely touching it here. This is, uh, you know, a little more than 0.6 dB, mostly 0.2 dB just to give us a little more average volume and take the very highest peaks off. And that is why this minus 0.7 
we have minus 0.7 over here on the master meter and uh, we should see about the same here on the loudest meter if we go through the loudest parts of this song and there we are with minus 0.7 metering of course is a very important part of mastering js has a fairly new loudness meter going on and i use it a lot let's take a look over here we have peak levels and then we have various lufs levels you can see the luffs integrated here let's take a look at how it works I just smile and say Now, if we go all the way through the song, you'll see the Luffs level is in the nines, the Luffs integrated. And uh, this is a loudness range, which gives us some information about the, well, the range of the loudness. But I use the JS dynamic meter. So this one gives us some average levels on the outside, some peak levels on the inside of the two tall meters. And then on the very inside, you see a loudness range. So we can compare how tight that is to our reference mixes and see if we're good. Next is the JS Gonia meter. It's from Toucan, another great Toucan plugin. And that gives us some idea of our mix's width and phase, if it's in phase. So I just want to say I'll be there in no time. And again, we can compare that to our reference mixes for width, and we want to see this meter mostly over here on the right side. This has a control for scale and for speed, which makes it quite useful. So these are the things that I use, the meters I use on the metering side. If you're a musician, a songwriter who wants to make good quality home recordings, my home recording mentorship program might be for you. Links below. Check it out. If you found value in what I've said so far, it makes sense to like, subscribe, share, and comment. It helps keep my channel going, and it tells YouTube what it is that you like. So take a moment and do it now. Some of these plugins are the standard plugins that come with Reaper and are in VST version, and you can use them in other DAWs. Some of them are written in the programming language that Reaper uses and are available if you just search for JS in your effects browser. And some of them are available through Repack, which you can download and install for Reaper. I'll have a link below. Now, there's lots of other things we could have done. We could have put saturation on the mid signal only or an exciter on the side signal. We could have used a tape plug-in. Lots of options. This is just what I came up with for this particular song. So that's how I mastered this song using Reaper free plugins. I'm Keith from no label no producer no limits.com. See you soon. Bye bye.